This is The Simp Hit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the long-awaited, the much-anticipated direct drive steering wheel by Fanatic that goes by the name The Podium. A very fitting name for a steering wheel for sim racing. The Podium Direct Drive or DD2 is their flagship model as Fanatic have finally entered the direct drive steering wheel market. The Fanatic Podium wheelbase goes for $14.99.95 and is a standalone base as it comes with no wheel rim or pedals. For the $1,500, you get an outrunner type, servo, or direct drive motor capable of 25 newton meters of power. Fanatic also makes a DD1 model that utilizes the exact same base, but is restricted in power to 20 newton meters and goes for $1,199.95. The motor within the podium base was specifically designed for sim racing and is also built to last. The podium wheelbase has built-in electronics that feature 1000 Hz USB update rate and have a wireless data and power to the Fanatic wheel rims, allowing for unlimited rotation. It also comes with a 5-year warranty from Fanatic and it is a PC-based wheelbase. However, you can use it on an Xbox if you use an Xbox One compatible wheel rim from Fanatic, then you can use it on the Xbox One. And for a PS4 version of the Podium, you would need to purchase the Podium Racing Wheel F1. This is a DD1 base with the PS4 F1 wheel and is PC and PS4 compatible. And that wheel and base goes for $15.99.95. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the DD2 wheelbase and talk about some of its other features. The outer casing of the podium is black metal with a distinct geometric shape about it. Each corner is raised up with a fin type shape and the flats have a carbon fiber looking insert that gives it a bit more style than a raw motor. Fanatic's website says these carbon fiber inserts are actually interchangeable. However, I did look through their entire website and I couldn't find any available at this point, but I gotta say that would be a pretty cool addition. On the sides of the dual mounting holes, allowing for typical side mount applications, as well as the Fanatic side mounts for the Rensport chassis or 8020 type rigs. The bottom side has the Fanatic triangle drill pattern that you will find on most rigs nowadays and threaded for M6 hardware. The top side features the same carbon fiber looking insert, along with a 2.7 inch OLED display for the Fanatic tuning menu. On the back side of the base, you will find the plug-in points for the Podium's built-in electronics. This includes the plug-in points for Fanatic, shifters, handbrakes, or pedals, or the almighty, all-important Torque key, aka the Chastity key. The overall dimensions of the wheelbase are 9.5 inches long, and about 7 inches wide, and 7 inches tall, and it weighs in at a whopping 16 pounds. At the front of the wheelbase, it has four big bolts where the motor mounts to the base. It also has a cutout hole with a foam shield that allows the 1 and 1 8 inch shaft of the motor stick out from within the base. This extends to a black aluminum coupler and then into the new backward compatible podium quick release mechanism. The new quick release features a gold anodized threaded shaft and then has a gold lockdown ring that then leads to a slip ring and a rubber gripper that puts pressure on the inside of the wheel rim when connected. This also has a threaded hole for the Fanatic wheel rim lockdown bolt and then finally the gold anodized connector section with the same keyed shape and internal connector pins as the original Club Sport connector making all Fanatic wheels compatible. This connection sticks out another 3.5 inches from the base, making the total length without an attached wheel to 13 inches. Inside the casing is the robust purpose-built direct drive motor, along with all the electronics other than the power supply. The power supply for the Podium DD2 wheelbase is external and a brick shape made of black plastic. The power supply is about 10 inches long by 4 and a quarter inches wide and 2 and a half inches thick and weighs a few pounds. It has a 5 foot long cord that connects to the wheel and that is the amount of freedom you have to hide it. Mine fit under the front of my rig nicely and out of the way. On the other end, it has a 5 foot cord to the wall socket. Another feature of the Podium wheelbase is the emergency stop, which at first glance looks like just like the emergency stops from all the other direct drive wheels that I've tested. You press the button and the wheel loses its power. You twist the button and it regains its power. However, this button has more to it though. For starters, it has three different M6 threaded mounting points, making it easy to put this on your rig. But it also has a power button, allowing you to actually turn off your wheel when done. 
The emergency stop is three inches by three inches wide and about three inches front to back and has a six foot cable and is the highest quality feeling stop that I've ever tested. In fact, I have to admit, when it came to my Leo Bodner, I took my emergency stop and I threw it away. When it came to OSWs, I just tossed on the ground behind my rig. I wasn't going to be using them and they didn't look very good. But this one has a high gloss finish, it has functionality, and it's easy to mount. So I'd definitely be adding it to my rig. And it's definitely a feature that does separate the podium from the other wheels in that department at least. In addition to the emergency stop, it does come with its own RJ12 cable specifically made for connecting Fanatic pedals, a USB cable, and a lockdown bolt for the non-quick release wheels. When it comes to mounting the podium to a SIM chassis, you have a couple of options. First, you do have those side mounts that work with the Fanatic adapters or other third-party adapters built for direct drive wheels and usually profile tubing. In addition to that, or in my case, you have the bottom triple mount holes which line up perfectly with my R-seat because the R-seat wheel mount allows for height and angle adjustment, I can accommodate the 90 degree or flat angle of the podium or direct drive wheels in general. Three M6 bolts later and the wheel is firmly mounted in place. On the back side of the wheel is where you're going to find all the plug in points for the wheelbase. The power cord is a six prong plug that has a keyed position. There's a spot for the USB cable and the emergency stop. There's also a spot for the torque key, as well as any and all Fanatic gear that you're plugging into the base. From there, it's onto the wheel rim. And as I mentioned at the beginning, all the Fanatic wheel rims will work on the DD2 wheelbase. And it all starts with that common to the club sport quick release mechanism. And then you're going to want to pull the quick release on your wheel, and then you push it all the way onto the shaft. I found the rubber gripper actually gripped a bit too well and actually bound on the wheel rim as I put it on. I used a little spit for lube and it went on easier. Lastly, we add the lockdown bolt to firmly hold the wheel rim in place and then tighten the gold lockdown ring to press the slip ring up onto that internal rubber piece that then holds the wheel into place really nicely. In fact, a little too nicely. Not only did I have to use a little lube to get it on, but getting it off was actually more difficult and I had to have a little tug of war just to get a wheel rim off of it. Now let's talk about the software side of things. It all starts by going to the Fanatic website and specifically to the Podium DD2 wheelbase page. You will then want to click on Downloads tab for the wheel. This will bring up a handful of downloads. You'll want to grab the Quick Start Guide and the Manual for reference later. And then you're going to want to get the driver for your operating system. You can then install the software, go through the steps until the software begins installing, and then also give Windows security access to finish. And when this is completed, your Podium will be ready to use in your favorite sims. Of course, you will need to go in and remap your controls. Now, one thing we've been waiting for from Fnatic, for the Podium in particular, was Fanalab. This being their new software suite that gives you additional control to the wheelbase. A lot of the features were things that you could do through the tuning menu, and that's all built into Fanalab as well, but it does have additional features that you had to turn to third-party solutions for in the past. With Fanalab, you can control the tuning menu of the wheel, including all of the wheel profiles, adjustments, vibration motors, and you can control the LEDs on various Fanatic wheel rims. You can download Fanalab from the Fanatic website, and then you can install it on your system. This is also a good time to mention the recommended settings for the Podium DD2 and DD1, and for that matter, all the wheel bases from Fanatic, and they're actually at a place that are, is somewhat hard to find on their website and not where you'd expect it to be. So when you're at the Fanatic website, go to the Community tab at the top. This will take you to a forum type web page. Scrolling down on the right hand side, you will find a heading for each sim. Click on the sim and then look for the game setting topic and open that. You will see the recommended settings for both the in the wheel and the in the game settings for each sim. These are great starting points and can be adjusted to your liking later. Now anyone who's familiar with Fanatic wheels is well aware of the tuning menu. Your ability to have five different profiles, one for each sim in many cases, and have individual settings per profile that are designed for those sims. It makes life very easy and you always used the little switches to operate the tuning menu. Now with Fanatilab, you have a Windows interface that allows you to make all those same settings. So now you can do it through the tuning menu 
or you can do it through Windows, which is a lot more easy to deal with, and you can always do it on the fly. Now, in addition to that, with Fanata Labs, you can also adjust things like the vibration motors. Many of the wheel rims have vibration motors built into them, and you can turn on and off the conditions in which they turn on or to what extent they do. You also have LED control built into Fanata Lab, with Fana Lab, which is totally new to it as well. These are things you had to do third party, and you have great control of the rev lights. You can adjust when they come on, which lights come on, and in those new Club Sport V2 wheels, you can actually adjust the warning indicators and even change the colors of the lights. After all of the installation, after doing all the software, after loading the recommended settings, it really gets down to how things drive. And I'm going to tell you, when it comes to direct drive wheels, for the most part, all the wheels share more things in common with themselves when compared to conventional wheels, the old school wheels of Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and Logitech. All of those differences are unique to direct drive wheels, things we count on, the rigidity, the strength, the rotational freeness that they move with. We count on this for direct drive wheels. It's one of the things that separates them from the conventional wheels. And I truly believe that that common characteristic is shared by all of them. In the case of the Fnatic DD2 wheelbase, you have a very rigid one and an eighth inch shaft that spins very freely and for the most part cannot be flexed in any direction. The out-of-the-gate force feedback recommended by Fnatic was way stronger than I like to run my wheel. In fact, it was about six times stronger than I ever run my wheel. So using iRacing, for example, they recommended 6% and a whole other variety of settings. But for me, I had to turn it all the way down to 2% to actually get comfortable. For every sim I tested, I started with the Fnatic recommended settings, and in every case, I had to turn down the force feedback strength quite a bit. In some cases, I also reduced the natural friction of the wheel to free things up just a little bit. So starting with the recommended settings by Fnatic per sim, those two settings were enough for me to get mostly comfortable, maybe li make little tiny changes from there. But once I had things dialed in, I could start to feel the more subtle effects of the wheel. Swerving the wheel on pit lane as I get the car rolling, I can feel a very smooth ramping up of forces in the wheel. It will strengthen as I come off center and then lighten as I swerve the other way until the cars regain grip and the weight is felt back in the wheel. The frictional forces of the wheel are very smooth and have a natural feel to them much like a real car. With the buildup of speed, the forces while centered or slightly off center are reduced as the frictional forces decrease with speed. However, when the brakes are applied and the front load returns, so does the weight of the wheel to correspond. With the brakes on and with the car in control, the loaded front end makes for a heavier wheel and a great sensation of traction from the car being sent to the wheel. The delivery is always smooth and consistent and far from spiking or clipping the force feedback meter in game. When testing the steering forces of the wheel, it was also very obvious that this was a very quick to react wheel with no lag or delay at all and a very thin or even non-existent dead zone. The wheel is all about precision. From the apex to the exit of the corner, we usually feel the load of the car switch from the front wheels back to the rear with the transfer weight in the car. The wheel's forces match this timing and the wheel instantly gets lighter and in some cases even accelerates in your hands if oversteer is induced. This allows for great car control and will allow the driver to feel what the car is doing to save the car at moments of overdriving. The wheel is free spinning enough and friction free enough to allow for rear end steering and wiggling your way out of corners. The podium also does a great job of letting you feel the bumps in the road or the hits of the curbing when running over apexes. With the podium's massive strength, it always had the power to not only deliver normal turning friction, but it could also hit me hard with the impact of big curbs or fast hits that disappear and leave me back with just the turning forces on the wheel strength smoothly, quickly, and without clipping the power meter. When we race, there's always a chance of a crash. And when it comes to the big impacts, like many big motor bases available, it can be downright dangerous. A significant hit with the wall, with the force feedback turned up to even medium strength, will teach you why real drivers let go of the wheel in a crash, because it can actually hurt you. 
Another great feature that is exclusive to the podium is the OLED display. Not only does this act as the tuning menu as we've discussed, but it can also be a real-time monitor of the wheel's functions, such as Newton meter output on the fly. Now I have to admit, everything I just described and what this wheel does in 2019, these are for the most part the features that every wheel on the market delivers. That's their job. That's what they're doing is interpreting the signals from the game. The game says you have more load, the wheel delivers more load. The, the game says you've hit a curb, the wheel says you hit a curb. This is the way it works from a Logitech G29 all the way up to a Bodner wheel. Now the differences, for me, the biggest differences come back to what I've said throughout this review. It's the rigidity, it's the strength, it's the wiggle free. It's the way the force feedback can hit you and then hit you even harder, which sometimes the lightweight wheels can't actually do. Now, for the most part, I did all my testing with my old formula, the original formula rim, and it worked out great for most of the hardcore sims that I ran. The only round wheel I actually had that was compatible with the base was the old P1 rim. This is built with the old clamshell device. Now, it is compatible with this base, which is nice because it saved my butt in rally racing. But when you put this on, it immediately put that chastity belt. It, ima um, it imagined it didn't even have the torque key. It wouldn't deliver the full power, but it did save my butt and made for some pretty good rally driving. The only downside of using this wheel is it was a little flexy. This wheel rim is not intended. So even though it turned down the force feedback, by the time it was clamped on a mechanism that wasn't going to move at all, there was just a little bit flex of flex compared to the formula rim. After testing the Fnatic Podium DD2 wheelbase extensively on a variety of different sims, it was obvious that it was delivering on the things that I find essential that I demand from when it comes to a direct drive wheel. It was strong. It was smooth. It delivered great force feedback. It operated silently. It was rigid. It was beautiful. It hit all of the marks that we actually expect from professional simulators. But in case, in case it wasn't perfectly clear to you, let's go ahead and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line starting off with the good. And that being, it's an extremely strong wheel. Very smooth turning. Great force feedback delivery. No wraparound wire from the wheel. Silent operation. High fidelity, very accurate. Tuning menu, multiple profiles, specific wheel game settings. Fanatic family, Fanatic ecosystem, pedals, shifters, handbrakes. Fanalab, better wheel control, visuals, and forces. Wide variety of affordable wheel rims to choose from. USB saver, multiple Fnatic devices plugged in. Power button installed on emergency stop. OLED display, able to monitor multiple functions. Multiple mounting options. Five year warranty. And now on to the not so good. It is an expensive wheelbase. It is a bulky wheelbase. I had to push my monitors back a little bit. Quick release, not so quick, hard to install, and even harder to remove. Must use torque key. Don't lose your torque key. The almighty, all important torque key, AKA the chastity key. Recommended settings hard to find. Fanalab can be confusing. And now onto the bottom line. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to direct drive wheels, 
the common characteristics are far more than the differences between wheels. When it really comes down to a direct drive wheel, the first thing comes down to strength or power, Newton beaters, torque, whatever you want to call it, and usually that costs money. The more torque, the more power you want, it's a bigger motor and it costs more money. So take my Leo Bonner Model 53 for example, maybe one of the premium when it comes to direct drive wheels. Well, that is a very expensive wheel, puts out about 20 and a half Newton meters, which is a little bit lighter than this one, but it's far more than I ever needed. In a long shot, I could do a lot better. In the case of the DD2 wheel, it puts out 25 Newton meters. I think that's more than 99% of the people out there. And you could save a lot of money by dropping down to the DD1 motor. It's a less expensive motor. It puts out 20 Newton meters, which is far more than I'm ever going to need. And it's going to save you 300 bucks right there with no real changes to the package. Now, another thing to take in consideration when looking at the Fanatic podium wheel bases is the incredible, the wonderful selection of wheel rims to choose from. There's such a huge variety of wheels to match to this base and they are less expensive than the options that are usually available to direct drive wheel owners. In addition to that, there's a nice selection of other sim gear also compatible with this wheel and part of the Fanatic family like shifters, handbrakes, pedal sets. And these factors are going to pull certain sim racers towards this product for sure. Now, if you're sitting there and you're happily driving on a Fnatic 2.5 wheelbase and you're not dying for extra power, then there's really no hurry to run out and buy this wheelbase immediately. I can see how you'd be tempted. I can see how if you have Fnatic equipment, it's, you're, you're in that family and you're going to want to. But unless you're looking for the difference in power, unless you have 1500 bucks or 1200 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, you just don't need to. The biggest difference comes down to that horsepower followed by the rigidity that is a little bit more and just the overall ability to hit you hard. Now, while I say the huge variety of wheels to choose from for the wheelbase is a definite pro of the wheel or one of the good things about it, at the same time, to a little bit, it's the Achilles heel of the podium wheelbase. The quick release, somehow this quick release actually took a step back from the club sport wheelbase. I mean, it's, it's the furthest thing from a quick release. You have to undo the screw. You have to fight the wheel on and off. You have to turn the clamp thing. It's not a quick release, it's a connector. Now, they have talked about upgrades to this wheel that are come later, things that we can hope for, like a better quick release. They've also talked about podium level wheels, which I think would be a good improvement as well, because as great as this wheel is, an upgraded wheel would match this wheelbase a lot better. I think when a lot of people move into the world of a direct drive wheelbase, they also assume and kind of want to be going to like a real life Momo replica type wheel or like a Sam Maxwell Delara wheel rim. Something high end, something very true to racing kind of goes hand in hand with the DD. So some upgraded wheels, the carbon fiber inserts, some new features to Fanalab, and a better quick release would go a long way to match the podium and the quality of it in other factors. Now, one thing I have to mention, but I also have to say it might have been single to just me. I did have a little bit of a grounding issue with this wheel, and at times I did get a buzzing sound in some of my audio caused by this wheel. Now, it was really hard for me to pinpoint it. It was a, really hard for me with 100% certainty to say that it was this wheel. But when I didn't use the wheel, I didn't have the buzzing sound. Now, I have not read through the forums of lots of people having this issue. So this could have been isolated to me. It could have been a combination of certain factors or certain things that I was doing or had going on, but it was a little tiny bit of an issue. It was a slight buzz. It wasn't huge, but it was there. It was more than when I use other equipment. But I do have to mention that, but again, it might have been isolated to me, my home, my particular wiring, I don't know. In order to do this review, I did wait a very long time for Fanalab. Fanalab, right? Yeah, Fanalab. I did wait for that software suite in hopes of it having some features that were quite honestly similar to what I have with Sim Commander and my Sim experience. The ability to add and subtract road noise and certain other effects specific 
more known from a motion sim, honestly. Now those features weren't there, but you did have the vibration controls. You did have some really cool LED controls. You did have some features that again, you had to turn to third party software to go with. And I really do like having the Windows interface instead of doing it through the tuning menu. They're redundant, you can use either one, but it's a lot easier to use your mouse and your big screen to make those changes and control everything in your wheel. And it does give you those next level features. Also, they are asking for their thoughts, your thoughts, your opinions on what else Fana Lab should have. So we can expect some upgrades from that software coming soon. We can at least hope. So all in all, the Fnatic Podium DD2 wheelbase performed very well. It hit all the marks. It was strong. It was smooth. It was silent. It was rigid. It did all the things that I expect from a DD wheel. And it was very comparable to the other DD wheel wheels on the market. However, this one did have other factors. It brought in the entire Fnatic family. Being able to use all my previous Fnatic wheel rims was a huge plus, and you know they did it with a particular client in mind. So I hope I've told you everything that you want to know about the Fnatic Podium DD2 wheelbase. I hope I've answered all of your questions, and you know if this is the right wheel for you or the right upgrade for you if you're part of the Fnatic family. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me, Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at the simpit.com, and I'll do my best to answer those additional questions. Other than that, that's going to do it for this one. Get out there, do some sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track. This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. <laughs> Looking blue. <laughs> Feeling blue, Mr. Payne. <laughs> the chastity key. <laughs> oh, do I need to go back and refilm it? Inside the casing is the robust, purpose-built, direct-drive meal. Meal. <laughs> Would you like to eat my podium? Inside the casing is the robust, purpose-built, and my next pa the power supply, power supply, power supply, other than the power supply, the power supply for the podium. Damn, it's 9.39. This is taking a while, and we're nowhere. We're nowhere. Inside the casing is the, inside the, casing is the robust, purpose-built, direct-drive wheel. <laughs> See, and then I get red in the face, and then I can't be right back on camera. And this still all feels fucking wrong. Okay. Inside the casing is the robust, purpose-built direct drive motor, along with the electronics other than the power side, all the electronics other, all of. Uh, yeah, we will have a blooper reel for this one, um, unfortunately. Inside of the casing is the robust, purpose-built direct drive Wheel, wheel, <laughs> inside of the case. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, why the fuck is he so red faced for this whole filming?